Well, we're going to, the way we organize this panel among ourselves is we're going we're gonna to start big. We're going to look at the basin here, here and in New Mexico and in Mexico. And, and we're going to talk about a lot of different programs that have been happening all over uh, the basin with respect to water issues. And then we're going to start narrowing it down to water issues in the state. So I'm going to take the bigger, bigger picture issue and just start looking at the Colorado River Basin as a whole. I know that this is no surprise, but there's lots of competing uses for our water. And our chore is to figure out how to make sure we can meet those needs in the future. I started to say was probably the most important anniversary was the Colorado River Compact, which was signed in 1922. So this is the 90th anniversary for the compact. It has established a solid framework for all of the um, states to work. Uh, to work in. Operating as a basin now, not an upper basin, a lower basin, we're operating as a basin. So we're two basins joined at the hip. One of the best pieces of um, history that came out of this agreement was the bonds that were forced among the states, seven states. The speaker before here, the one at 430, was talking about creating relationships and how you really have to start from the ground up. Seven basin states were really upset with each other. So we ended up forging ahead a historic agreement that allowed us some flexibility in how we operated the river and within the framework of the compacts and the law of the river. And um, this shows us that we're going to see it coming. And, and I have to credit a friend of mine from Denver Water, who when she looked at this chart basically said, this is like a train coming at you at three miles an hour. If you can't get out of the way, it's your own fault. So we can see it coming. It doesn't mean, though, that we shouldn't do anything. Our state is looking pretty grim right now for um, snowpack. Statewide average as of April 3rd was 49%. I think last week that might have gone up a couple, a couple percentage points. Safety factor, besides the cushion we have for our delivery obligation, we have reservoirs. And reservoirs are what's going to help us this year. Even though the snowpack is so-so, the reservoirs are going to allow us to use our compact entitlement. These are the reservoirs in the federal system. You can see that they're pretty, uh, pretty well set, uh, mostly because of last year again. But um, they, they do save us. What you have to remember is Mexico is a sovereign nation. We agreed in a treaty, 1944, that we would give them, we would deliver their share of the river. Both countries decided that was a certain amount. It was up to Mexico to decide how they were going to use that water. We in the United States can't tell them to do that. It's like I can't tell Utah how to use its water. I was at a conference last September and the Mexican commissioner for the uh, Inner Boundary Water Commission was asked point black, by, blank by an NGO, if United States got you more water, would that water make it to the Delta? And his answer was, probably not. You know we have uses that depend on this water in Mexico. Now, that being said, Mexico has been very concerned and willing to look at some environmental, joint environmental projects. This is a graph that most people see. It shows that the supplies are less at this point than the demands, than the uses. That says we have to be paying attention. 